Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome back to Awakening the Show that illuminates the spirit of Islam. My name is Abdul Salam Kamruddin and I'll be with you until about 8 p.m. or just before that inshallah. And alhamdulillah as I've promised earlier I'm very 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 excited alhamdulillah and for two reasons or maybe three inshallah. Firstly spring has sprung and not the spring outside but the spring of Mawlid, the spring of love subhanallah. So this evening is all about love and that love is the, the love of uh, uh, the, the Mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then secondly also why I'm excited is because we have a very very special guest in studio with us this evening and one that, that I, I uh, follow tremendously and, and love in, in, inshallah and, and the way the, the style of, of speech and, and you know the, the advice shared is so beautiful it is uh, it just brings about his own style and his own unique. This is something that we don't often hear or find, uh, you know, in Cape Town especially. But nonetheless, let me welcome Azadat Ahvis for Sahil Sufi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah ta'ala wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khayl, jazakallah for such a beautiful introduction. I'm very honored to be here, alhamdulillah, on Radio 786, alhamdulillah. And we are celebrating Rabi'un Noor. It's the first spring. Can't ask for more than that. And to be in Cape Town and, you know, to to experience the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the experience of Mawlid in Cape Town is something that the rest of South Africa needs to take a leaf from, inshallah. Absolutely, inshallah. And also, I welcome uh, Mufti Sayyid Harun Al-Azri as well. Mufti Sayyid, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To you and the listeners. Alhamdulillah. So this evening, like I've mentioned, is all things Mawlid, inshallah. So uh, we, we're going to ask a few questions and uh, perhaps between Mufti Saab and uh, Hafiz Saab, we can, we can answer them, inshallah. So firstly, um, it is the month of Rabbil Awal. It is obviously, as we know, the month of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I'm going to ask uh, a few a few questions in terms of, of the Mawlid uh, as well. And um, I know that... Uh, as as most of us might know, or some might might believe that the Mawlid has been invented around um, six thirty after after Isri, if I'm not mistaken. Perhaps just uh, enlighten us a bit uh, regarding that as well. Bismillah. I'll, I'll share a few words, and then Hafiz will share a few words. Inshallah. Inshallah. Right. So if someone is talking about invented, where does Mawlid start? Where do we get our evidence from it? We believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala spoke about the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We believe that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about his own birth, and we believe that the Sahaba also spoke of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And when we talk of six thirty, it came. That is just when it happened officially, officially. So, say for example, Eid al Adha and Eid al Fitr is always there till now. Now we get the Muslim president, and then he say, "Okay, I give you a public holiday." <laughs> now, when he give us a public holiday, we can't say that no. You know, Eid al Fitr and Eid al Adha only started in twenty twenty four. Only in 2025. That would be absurd. So the reality is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke of the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when, when Allah took a promise from all the Prophets that when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to you, جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to you, then what you're going to do? لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْسُرُنَّهُ That you're going to believe in him and you're going to serve him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he spoke of his own birth, he spoke of his own life. He said, "You all know who I am," and then he mentioned who he is. He said, "Ana sayyidu waladi Adam." I am the leader of all the children of Adam. He says, "When I was born, then my mom saw the light and she saw the palaces." He spoke of his own birth. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he spoke of his birth, he said that I am the du'a of Ibrahim alaihi salam, my father Ibrahim alaihi salam. He said, "I am the good news of." Isa alayhi salam wa mubashiran bi rasuli ya'ti min ba'di ismu Ahmad so he spoke about it and his sahaba I give you one example only and then I give it to Hafizah insha'Allah <laughs> Sayyidina Abbas the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he came to the Prophet and he said I want to praise you ya Rasulullah hmm. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said go ahead so he said anta lamma wulidta ashraqati al-ard bi nurika al-ufuku that ya Rasulullah when you were born the entire universe was illuminated by your light. So he spoke of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam made dua for him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must protect his mouth. The Prophet never prohibited him. So we know that it is allowed from it's the sunnah of Allah, sunnah of the Prophet and sunnah of the Sahaba. Allahu a'lam. Hafizah, please. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah to Mufti Sahab for that. You know, it's rather interesting. 
that when we look at the concept of Mawlid, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the final book of Allah, which is Al-Quran, on so many occasions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah is giving us a historical narrative in terms of the life of Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam, Allah in his infinite wisdom could have discussed so many issues in the lives of Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam. But if you study the Holy Quran from cover to cover, you will understand that one thing that was given priority in the Holy Quran, when Allah mentions the qasas and the stories of Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam, it was related to their births. So Allah has commemorated and celebrated the arrival of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this earthly realm in the Holy Quran. Like for example, the one of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam. He, he describes the entire process of birth of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam with the pangs of of, of labor, the labor pangs and, and so on. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the dua of Zakaria alayhi salam. He speaks about how he made dua for a child. So all of these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala celebrates the arrival of the Anbiya alayhi salam in general. So if this is the case for Anbiya like Musa and Yahya and Isa and Adam alayhi salam, can you imagine how much more it should be for us, the Ummah, to be honored to follow in the Sunnah and the tradition, the divine tradition of celebrating and commemorating the blessed Mawlid of the greatest of all creatures. Sayyiduna wa Mawlana Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sallam Subhanallah um, Now um, Hafizab Moving on to that One, one always uh, Generally when it comes to the season of, of Mawlid We, we, we have uh, Mawlid gatherings And, and or Nasheed uh, renderings And so on So uh, why is it that we, we, we celebrate the Mawlid in this concept? Okay This is a very interesting point I want, I want to extend this whole concept of Mawlid let us take it and understand the Mawlid to be an overarching theme, right? Because the Mawlid is not only about celebrating the physical arrival of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on planet Earth in the month of Rabiul Awwal. The concept of Mawlid goes far beyond that and Mawlid is purely an umbrella term for a whole host of other commemorations and celebrations that possibly we are unaware of that took place in the month of Rabiul Awal besides the birth of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm. Mawlid and his physical birth is just one part of it. Now just to give you, to, to extend this whole concept of Mawlid, we need to understand and we need to realize that this is not only the month of Mawlid. Are we aware of the fact that the Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Wasallam concluded with his entry into al Madinatul Munawwara? And this was a very important moment. And when was this? This was on Friday, the 12th of Rabiul Awal. So, our Islamic calendar is marked by the Hijrah, which was initiated by Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he chose the Hijrah of Rasulullah to now mark our calendar. And the day of the arrival, according to the most uh, authentic opinion in terms of Sahih Ahadith, was Rasulullah arrived in al Madinatul Munawwara from Quba on Friday, the 12th of Rabiul Awal. Now, why is this significant? Number one is that it was on Friday, the 12th of Rabiul Awal, when Rasulullah entered into Al Madinatul Munawwara that Islam received freedom. For 13 years of Makkah, Islam and Muslims were under siege. And Rasulullah, when he entered into Al Madinatul Munawwara on the 12th of Rabiul Awal, he entered as the de facto leader of the newly established state of al Madinatul Munawwara. So as, the, as you and I celebrate Freedom Day on the 27th of April, if you ask us when was the day of freedom for Islam and the inauguration of the first state of Islam and the inauguration of the first eternal president of Islam, you will have to acknowledge that it took place in the month of Rabi Awal. So Freedom Day for the Ummah, in terms of the establishment of the state of Islam, the official political state of Islam, was on Friday the 12th of Rabi Awal. Rasulullah entered and was inaugurated as the president of Medina on the 12th of Rabi Awal. 
thirdly, when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered, he was greeted. And this is these are these are the the hadith of Sahih Muslim. It's a lengthy hadith of Sahih Muslim. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was greeted with such a plum, and he was greeted with such a door and love that the narration states that the the the, the exact words, if I remember it correctly, the the hadith says, "وَتَفَرَّقَ الْغِلْمَانُ وَالْخَدَمُ فِي الطُّرُقِ يُنَادُونَ يَا مُحَمَّدٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ يَا مُحَمَّدٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ." This is Sahih Muslim. It says that the the, 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 the people climbed upon the housetops and the women and the boys scattered in the way meaning they lined the streets of al Madinah to Al-Munawwara and they were all shouting the slogan Ja'a Muhammad Ja'a Rasulullah they said Muhammad has arrived the messenger of Allah and they said Ya Muhammad they call out to him Ya Muhammad Ya Rasulullah and in another narration it states then he was welcomed in we received our first national anthem what's our national anthem? Tala al-Badru alayna min thaniyyat al-wada' wajab al-shukru alayna ma da'a lillahi da' so all of this took place in the month of Rabi'u nur the establishment of the first masjid of Quba took place in the month of Rabi'u al-awwal so the first official free masjid in the history of Islam after the Kaaba was Quba and where were the foundations laid when? in the month of Rabi'u al-awwal so we're not only celebrating Mawlid, we're celebrating the establishment of Masjid al-Quba. We're celebrating the establishment of Masjid al-Nabawi, which also took place within the month of Rabiul Awal upon the arrival of Rasulullah. We're celebrating the inauguration of our eternal president, Rasulullah. We are celebrating the freedom of religion. The freedom of having our first political state, which was Al Madina to Munawwara. We are celebrating our national anthem, Tala al Badru Alayna. We're celebrating the fact that, like you said, you know, we do the Nasheeds. Sahaba did the Nasheeds. I mean, they are saying, Ja Muhammad, you know, we have some Julus and we have processions. This is in following in, in, the, in the Sunnah of the people of Medina who line the streets. Can you imagine the women are climbing onto the rooftops and they're all, you know, singing. And then there were little girls. We talk about Nasheeds. There were little girls who were from the neighborhood of Banu Najjar. Mm. Right? And they never met the Prophet of Allah. They've never seen him before. They ran behind him and they were playing with their dafs. And they said, Nahnu min jiwari bani najjar. Ya habbada Muhammadu min jar. He said, we are the children of Banu Najjar. And how fortunate we are. Muhammad is our neighbor. So they sang songs for the Messenger of Allah. So they celebrated it. So even if you're not going to take the celebration in terms of the technical, what we call Mawlid, then at least sing and celebrate the inauguration of the Islamic State. Celebrate the entry of Rasulullah after his hijrah into al Madinah to Munawwara. Mm. Sing like the Sahaba did. Sing like the children of Banu Najjar did. Express joy. And the Rasulullah turned around. He's never met them. He said, by Allah, I swear, I love you as well. Look at the love of these little teenage children for the Messenger of Allah. And this is how it was. So, it's a celebration on, on various levels, and I'm just started with this whole issue of Rabbi Allah. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, th- this is exactly what I've been to know, the, the, the type of uh, nasiha we would find from Afisab, inshallah. We, we, don't, we don't get this in Cape Town. But so we, we are truly blessed and honored to have Afisab with us. So nonetheless, uh, moving on with this as well. So uh, th- there might be, as uh, I'm sure Afisab know, the, 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 uh, there might be some naysayers mm-hmm. and some that, that might argue, you know, the permissibility and mm-hmm. the bid'a or, or whether or not we're following the Christian and so on mm-hmm. so um, can, can Avisab direct us in, 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 in line to, to any of those like I said if you want to get technical about the whole issue of Mawlid whether to celebrate a birthday is a bid'ah and an innovation I say okay leave that aside this is the sunnah established by Sahaba Kiram, the, the, the Ansar of Al Madinah to Al Munawwara. At least, if you don't celebrate the Mawlid, celebrate the, est- the establishment of Islamic State. Celebrate the fact that Rasulullah also left this physical dimension in the month of Rabiul Awwal. Although, historically, let me clarify this matter, and it's mm. been scientifically proven. Rasulullah's demise from this world was not on the 12th of, of Rabiul Awwal. There's a scientific study on it. So, anybody who gives you this, this argument that no, you must mourn the 12th because the Prophet some left the world uh, even mathematically if you mathematically calculate, if you calculate correct. correct Mufti Sahib is correct so that's that's out of the question secondly when it comes to this I say fine celebrate the establishment of Islamic State celebrate the, the Hijrah celebrate the establishment of Masjid al-Nabawi celebrate the establishment of Masjid al-Quba celebrate the the, 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 the freedom of, of the religion <laughs> celebrate the praises of the Prophet do what the Sahaba did on the 12th of Rabiul Awal Rasulullah gave his first inaugural khutbah in a free city, as a free citizen, and as the first citizen, his first khutbah, first Juma in the history of Islam was on Friday the 12th of Rabiul Awal. So celebrate our first khutbah, celebrate our first Juma. 
But you can't deny the fact that there's so much to commemorate and celebrate in Rabiul Awal, over and above the Maulid, which is obviously the crowning moment. <laughs> so look at it differently and celebrate for any other reason. Alhamdulillah. Is that anything? See, if we add to that <laughs> and look at the poetry, right? Mm-hmm. Even after the passing of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari, where Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu he says, "Sidna Umar, he went past Masjid al-Nabawi, and Hassan bin Thabit Yunshidu, he was doing nasheed in the Masjid al-Nabawi, and while he was doing this nasheed, Sidna Umar looked at him, so he said, and then what he says, he says, in a gathering, fi halqatin, in a gathering, which in it is Abu Huraira." So meaning the Sahaba was sitting in a gathering and reading the praises of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam doing nasheed in a gathering, and then he said, "Oh Abu Huraira, stand up and tell him that I used to read these praises when someone better than him was here. When Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was here, I used to do it. And we know the other hadith, the Sahih hadith, where the Prophet used to put a member for Hassan to praise him, and Hassan used to stand on that member and praise the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if Hassan was doing a bid'ah." To stand and praise the Prophet, like how we stand and do Ashraqal and Salami, Prophet will say, "Oh Hassan, get off! You're doing a bid'ah." But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Allahumma iyyidhu bi ruhul qudus." Oh Allah, support him with ruhul qudus. So are we saying that Allah, Jibrail, and Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam are all wrong and all encouraging bid'ah? La hula wa la quwwata illa billah. Allah save us from this ignorance. So far, Allah. <laughs> speaking of that, uh, Mufti Sam, sometimes we would find when we when we go to uh, the Milad gatherings and so on, uh, some would question. But uh, you know, um, in in the time of Rasulullah, Rasulullah never did this deed, or he didn't do this act, <laughs> or, or none of the Sahabas did uh, certain things and so on, which which we might find in certain gatherings. Um, how how do we clear the the, the misconception <laughs> of all of these? <laughs> you know, it's rather interesting. There's a hadith which is uh, narrated by Sayyidina Amir Muhawiya radiAllahu taala anhu. Right, and he saw a group of Sahaba Kiram gathered. Right, and this is I think is in Sunan Nisa'i as and well. And the Hadith in Sahih Muslim, Sahih Muslim, as, Muslim well. as well. The Sunan Nisa'i has the extended version of the Hadith, and he he happened to pass by them, and he asked them, "What are you doing here?" So the Sahaba Kiram were a bit hesitant to respond, and so he says, "No, what are you doing?" He said, "No, we've gathered to remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and to remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's favors upon us, O Kama Qal, and so on." So he then he went and gave them the glad tidings that sitting here and remembering Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's favors, sitting and gathering together to mention Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's nigma and his and his fazl upon the people and so on, there is what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam approved of, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala approved of. So the Sahaba Kiram would sit and gather and speak about the messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they would speak about his fadail and so on, like like Mufti Sahib had mentioned. He said, you know, Ibrahim was Khalilullah and Mu- and Musa was Kalimullah. So Rasulullah was walking past. He joined the conversation, and then he spoke about himself in a gathering Allah when Allah he was Habibullah. being praised and so on. He said, "I said I'm Habibullah. I'm the beloved of Allah." So to speak about the, the being being the beloved of Allah and speaking about the virtues of the Messenger of Allah is his sunnah, which he engaged in with the Sahaba Kiram in a gathering. See what Hafiz Sabi is saying here. Even that hadith of uh, Sayyidina Muawiyah. That hadith in Azat Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu, when the Prophet came, he said, "Why are you all sitting here?" He said, "We are praising Allah subhanahu wa taala." In the other hadith, "Man Allah bika," that Allah has blessed us with you, ya Rasulullah. Man Allah alayna bika. Man Allah alayna bika. With you, ya Rasulullah. So because of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then the Prophet said, "I'm not doubting you people," but Jibril came to me hmm. to say that Allah subhanahu wa taala is talking proudly amongst the malaika about this gathering, right? And when we talk of doing things what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never do, it doesn't mean it's haram. Let's take from the Sahaba themselves. If we look at Ummul Mu'minin Sayyida Aisha, she understood bid'ah the best because she even gave the hadith about bid'ah. Did the Prophet ever fast the entire year? Ever? No. But as that Aisha radhiyallahu anha after the passing of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, she used to skip out the five days, the four days the Hajj and the three days of Tashriq and the Eidul Fitr, the five days which are haram to fast on, she never fast. But besides that, she fasts the entire year. She done something what the Prophet never do, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But his chais, Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu, he read the entire Quran in the night. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never do that. We read Quran from the phone or we teach someone through the phone. The Prophet never do it. So does it mean it's not allowed now? 
Sharia don't work like that. As long as there is evidence in the Holy Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu to do something, you cannot say it is a bid'ah. You cannot say it is haram. Allahu a'lam. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Hafiz, now that we've uh, sort of cleared all of those uh, misconceptions mm-hmm. and so on, we are in the season of, of Mawlid. Mm-hmm. Uh, inshallah, give us some of, of your of your pearls, uh, you know, and, and, and your inspirations uh, pertaining to, to what Mawlid really is and the essence of Mawlid, inshallah. You know, f- for, for me personally, Mawlid is a celebration of being human and the honor of being human. Rasulullah is not from the species of angels. Rasulullah is not from the species of jinn. Rasulullah is from the species of human beings. And if Mawlid signifies anything for us, it is to teach us that we can unlock our human potential. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taught the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and had, had, had schooled him in enabling us and empowering the entire ummah to be able to truly realize what our true potential is. And when we see what the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam achieved in the reformation and the transformation and the illumination of a group of people that was so so completely you know in, in that sense of the word uncivilized and the way he reformed and he transformed them you'll see the transformative effect of the personality of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam is enough to celebrate our humanity and the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying qul ya yunas inni alaykum jami'a i am a universal and i am a global messenger in terms of being of of da'wa and being a, a representative of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth but he is rahmatun muhda and his rahmatul lil alameen. He is a universal mercy. Now, if we want to ask, if humanity wants anything right now, humanity is seeking mercy. And who is the very source and essence of mercy? He is the very fountainhead of mercy. Is rahmatul lil alameen. And the Prophet of Allah is, you know, he's the Rasul for the Muslim as well as the non-Muslim. So, in fact, we should be celebrating the Mawlid more. Why? There's only one person on planet Earth whose birth day is celebrated. Rasulullah. Everybody else, their birth date Date. is celebrated. Isa alayhi salam, popularly, 25th of December. That's official, Christmas Day. Any other prophet, any other thing, certain date, 20th of this or 15th of that or whatever it is. Rasulullah is the only human being on planet Earth whose birth day day is literally celebrated because we celebrate it every single Monday. So Rasulullah's birthday as celebrated by him is celebrated 52 weeks in a year. He's the only one whose birthday is celebrated. Everybody else's birth date is celebrated. So 52 days, 52 weeks in a year is how we are supposed to actually be celebrating Mawli because the Prophet of Allah said in Sahih Muslim he, was, he, used to, he used to observe fast in commemoration of his own birth he said it's the day Monday was the day I was born and it is the day upon which the, the, the Quran was revealed to me so the Prophet of Allah is the only human being on planet earth whose Mawlid is celebrated weekly Number one. Number two, there's no other human being on planet Earth, including Isa alayhi salam, who's, who has the largest religious following in terms of numbers in Christianity. Muslims throughout the world don't celebrate only on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. If you go to Yemen, you go to Mauritania, you go to any <laughs> part of the Muslim world, you come to Cape Town. Saturday is a Mawlid. Friday is a Mawlid. Thursday is a Mawlid. Every day is a Mawlid. Why? Because we are celebrating the beloved of Allah. And there's no beginning and no end to the celebration. It's just a formalization of the process in Rabi'ul Awal from a historical perspective that we gather around it and you know and 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 magnify it more in the month of Rabi'ul Awal than any other month. Because in realistically speaking, the only birthday that is ever celebrated of any human being is Rasulullah's. <laughs> so, uh, this have anything that uh, Ustaz wants to add to that? See, when we're talking of the blessed birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we look at the word mawlid, right? Now everything, whenever we speak, what happens is with people who want to be our opponents, they say, no, where are you bringing this from? Only Quran and Sunnah, only Quran and Sunnah. So when you share with them Quran and Sunnah, 
then they take benefit. So I'll say two things. One is we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every day he sends salam upon the prophets. Right? Wa salamun ala al But in Al-Quran, in two places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, peace be upon Yahya and peace be upon Isa alayhi salam on the day that they were born. Salamun alayya yawma wulidtu. Peace be upon me on the day I was born. Wa salamun alayya yawma wulida. And peace be upon him on the day he was born. So if we say everything is so important in Al-Quran, and nothing is extra, and nothing is useless, then why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized this? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized the idea of mawlid in the Holy Quran. So that's clear for us. And you mentioned the thing that people say, okay, you're, gonna, you're following the Christians and that. This is a qiyas, a analogy with a discrepancy, which is not accepted. So if I say why I'm doing something, and you want to come and impose your idea on me, and your sinister agenda on me, then that's up to you. Say if I say I'm making sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facing the Kaaba. Now you say that, no, 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 the Kaaba is a stone. It looks like an idol. And the Hindus also, they make sajda to a stone. So you are worshipping the Kaaba. I'm telling you, no, I'm only facing there because I worship Allah. And Allah told me, فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطَرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Allah told me to do that. In my heart, I have Iman. So although it looks the same on the outside, it's not the same. Although the Kaaba is a stone, the idol is a stone. And it's two humans making sajda towards it. But one is worshipping the stone and one is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if you say that no, because the Christians are having mawli, that's why they're having it, we say no. We have it because the Quran says it is allowed. We say that the Sunnah says it's allowed. The Sahaba done it and we believe that it is allowed in Islam. That's why we're doing it. But if you still want to say because the Christians are doing it, then khalas, that's your prerogative. Allah knows best. <laughs> Subhanallah. So, um, Afisab, uh, with regards to our, our, our youth generation, mm-hmm. today we would find uh, globally um, so, so, some they, they, they celebrate the Mawlid, but they might celebrate it a bit differently to how our elders did. Mm-hmm. And and others as well, uh, they they also just, you know, falling by the wayside and, and mm-hmm. forgetting, uh, you know, all about this. So how can we revive the spirit of Mawlid within our youth as well? Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah for that question. You know, we need to be in the correct context, bid'atis, <laughs> innovators. We are in. We are living in an age where, in the apex of uh, uh, technology, is the is the smartphone. People live their lives through their phones. We have so many platforms today, where in our youth are engaging in most of the time and spending most of their day on, which is on the smartphone, either on TikTok, either on Instagram, either on Snapchat, YouTube, or any other social media platform. This is the medium of communication today our whole agenda should be to promote the love of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam and to extol his virtues and to inspire humanity and our youth in particular with regards to the sunnah of rasulullah and the character and the akhlaq of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam but you got to do it in a manner which is palatable and today it's either 180 words you know in terms of a text or it is in terms of a 3 minute tiktok video the children's attention span doesn't go beyond three minutes anymore. So we've got to have innovative ways of attracting the attention of our of our youth on the platforms that they are engaging in and garnering their attention by giving them a three-minute soundbite on one beautiful characteristic or one beautiful statement of the Messenger of Allah in a manner that will be palatable to them. If you're going to give that preachy type of, you know, archaic style of, you know, that the India, Indo-Pak subcontinent thing, it may not be appeal to <coughs> Generation Z. But if you come up there in the hip style or in the way that people engage in today and you can attract the attention of the youth and you can show, if I may use the word, how the Holy Prophet ﷺ himself was forward thinking and he loves his ummah and he is directed towards his ummah and he's and his and his geared towards his ummah so that everybody is accessible to him and they are accessible to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam i think our youth will gravitate towards it so we need to use this platform it's critical to use these platforms today and if the youth don't understand urdu anymore so compose poems in english do it in rap i may get a rap on my knuckles for that one <laughs> <coughs> but but 
these are the things that attract people in in the ghettos in America and so on. So you got to speak to the people in the language <laughs> that they understand. Yes, kalimun nasa ala qadri qulum. And moreover, slam poetry is a very big thing right now. So if these are things, are platforms which can direct you to a Sayyidina or Mawlana Muhammad Rasulullah, this is found in the in the example of Hassan bin Thabit. <laughs> It's found in 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 the poetries of other Sahaba Kiram. So we just have to adjust it accordingly. And you'll notice that there are trends. The trends that used to exist in the 80s and 90s now they've changed. Now you'll see the nasheeds are different, the qasaid are different, the, the cultures uh, and the way people experience Maulid. Even in South Africa, it's different in Durban. It's different in Cape Town. So we've got to be ahead of these things because the whole point here is that you know we need to orient the people towards Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And once the love is genuine, it doesn't make a difference which platform you're on. That 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 energy of love will transfer. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. And I think that also adds to the to the question regarding you know the the, the acts that the Sahaba never did or that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi never did, and uh, so so bringing about all of these new uh, type of concepts to the youth is it, it's also part of that. So it, it it's not really to say that it's not allowed or it cannot be done uh, as long as it is something that will like Hafsab has mentioned it's going to bring the or instill the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in you and then by, by all means inshallah. But the precedent was already set. Like the hadiths that I mentioned to you, and these are hadiths in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, right? Cultural expressions of love for the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were already being expressed in the presence of the Messenger of Allah by different cultures, not only the Arabs, like I gave you the ch- example of the children of Banu Najjar, the young girls with their dafs, but the Banu Arfida, the Abyssinians, when Rasulullah came into al Madinatul Munawwara, they danced around the Messenger of Allah. They had their, their spears and they had their, uh, Shield. their shields and they were dancing around the Messenger of Allah because that, you know, as we call it in South Africa, toy toying. So that was their cultural expression of their love for Rasulullah. And some of the Sahaba Kiram also said, oh, what are these doing? So the Prophet said, oh, Banu Arfida, leave them. Don't go, leave them. Don't leave them. Because, and he, he identified them with their specific culture. They're the Banu Arfida, they're the Abyssinians. This is their culture. And Ja'far uh, bin Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he came from Abyssinia and the Prophet of Allah spoke to him, <laughs> he also did a bit of a jig around the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet of Allah permitted it. So all of these cultural expressions, like we said, you know, whether it's in song, poetry, dance, or doing a toy toy with your spears and your and your and your shields and so on, they were already established as cultural and, and permissible cultural expression by the Messenger of Allah. And when they were singing around him, they were singing in their language. Right? And Prophet of Allah couldn't understand what they were saying because they were speaking in the Abyssinian language. So then they, someone translated and said, they say, oh Prophet of Allah, they are saying Muhammadun Abdun Salih. They are saying Muhammad is, is, is a pious and a devotee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they sang it in their language. So for our brothers and sisters who are of African origin, we need to direct them towards their own cultures and their own personal cultural expressions and get them to sing in their language, whether it's Toza, whether it is Zulu, whether it is Soto and so so on there so that they can identify with the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which goes beyond the barriers of language which goes beyond the barriers of race and color but the unifying factor is the name Muhammad and all of these cultural expressions were already established as a sunnah in the era of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah so we've got about uh, five minutes left I'm going to ask Afisab just to inspire us with perhaps a bit of nasiha that we could also take home regarding, um, you know, celebrating Mawlid. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, um, the, the, the hadith he said, the Holy Prophet said, Addibu awladakum. He said, refine the character and the refine the, 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 the upbringing of your children with three things. One is the love of the Messenger of Allah. The second is the love of the family of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the recitation of Quran. All parents today are obsessed and are prioritizing the upbringing of their children to ensure that they have stable, secure, and 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 are living very comfortable and very very you know good lives, and they want their children to develop emotionally, 
spiritually as well as intellectually and eventually financially so that they may be secure human beings. But the one thing that I have noticed that we don't give as much priority to as we should is that we don't introduce the Messenger of Allah وسلم, into the lives of our children from a very young age. Now I will speak from experience. Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I attempted it with my own children. And I've noticed it with our programs that we do in Durban. After COVID, and this is a personal experience, after COVID or during COVID, we had no option but to go online to do our dhikr programs and to do so to, to reach the audiences because of the COVID restrictions. And we started with our YouTube dhikrs and so on, and we used to do some nasheeds and nas and qasaid and whatever it is. When COVID came to an end, I was shocked to to... To, to be informed that little children as young as three, four, and five literally were getting hooked onto the dhikr. They were actually reciting. Some of the kids come up to me up until today. They will tell me, Hafiz Fuzel, you must say, Sallallahu Rabbuna ala nuril mubin. We want you to start it with that. And they all want to sit next to you and they want to sit and read the qasida or the naat with you in the assembly of dhikr. Now, Initially, I just brushed it off. But when I realized that this has now gained traction, I was shocked to see that parents come up and tell me and they send me little voice notes. See, uh, my daughter is, is, is imitating your dhikr. Or the children in the Montessori school are holding their own assemblies of dhikr and own assemblies of naat and qasaid when they are competing with one another to sing the praises of the Messenger of Allah. So I think the first thing that we should teach our children before mama and papa is say Muhammad. And inculcate the love of Rasulullah in their hearts by just taking his name, by sending salawat, and, and introducing them, directing towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I think it will transform their lives. And once you start speaking about him and, you, and bringing in his akhlaq, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa loved children. The Prophet of Allah never spoke a lie. And we give them these little anecdotes. You'll be surprised how eagerly our children listen and will enjoy listening to a three-minute story about the message because children love stories. So we start off with the stories of Rasulullah and the ones that attract. And once that is done, we build on that. And once the, and they introduce the messenger of Allah, then you introduce them like the Prophet of Allah said for the refinement of their character. Introduce them to his, his Ahlul Bayt, Ali. Fatima, his grandsons, Hassan and Hussein. See how the Prophet of Allah used to love Hassan. How he used to love Hussein. Look at the character of Hassan. Look at the character of Hussein. Look at how Fatima the Zahra used to love her, her, her father, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this inspires our children to be to want to be like the family of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the nur of Quran is nurun ala nur. Right? So, and, and now Cape Town, mashallah, has a culture of Quran. It's already embedded. So all that we need to do now is to you know create this you know almost like a this this a, a threefold effort in our homes when we mention Rasulullah we get them to read salawat all the time and you know get them into nice tunes so that you know it it picks up very quickly on their tongues and so on and once the name of Rasulullah perfumes your tongue it the, the the fragrance goes to the heart and I can tell you I've tried it and I've tested it and the love of Rasulullah just enters into the hearts of those children. Subhanallah. 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 Mashallah. Uh, we're unfortunately out of time. I would have loved to have continued this for much, much longer. But nonetheless, perhaps uh, next time, inshallah, if time allows, we would uh, love to have uh, inshallah, us jazakallah, again, inshallah. But Jazakallah for joining us this evening. And we also say Jazakallah to Mufti Said Harun Al Azri as well. And for everyone behind, you know, assisting to arrange Hafiz have to be with us as well. For those who, who, who might be wondering, Hafiz Fuzel Sufi is the Imam of the Westville Masjid in Durban. And we thank Hafiz Ab once again for joining us here. Jazakallah for, for the invitation, inshallah. Allah I mean, accept, inshallah.